Hello everyone, Zap here, a multi-season, multi-challenger Velkus guy. I've been spamming Vay since minute one, trying to understand the mess of a character. And I'm happy to report that I've identified the key game patterns. A lot of it comes down to playing around his passive and proking it. So in a way, he's very, very similar to Velkus, where the true skill will shine if a person knows how to control his mana bar, control the waves, and proc the passive very, very efficiently. I'm happy to tell you that this is one of the champs where it took me over 10 games to like start feeling comfortable on I spammed him a lot and only after a bunch of games and a good night's sleep I started to like kind of get into the group of doing the combos and patterns and there's numerous combos Okay, so every basic ability which he has three of he can combine with another basic ability Which is three so essentially he has nine basic abilities In fact, I've done the math and I may actually be the first person to do so basically he has nine abilities Like he can choose one of nine abilities and he can combine with another six unique abilities uh, Which then he can combine with another three more unique abilities then he can also also choose to dump the ult on top of it which has four different placements like first second third or fourth after like the, the final ability and that gets us to 648 and then if you also want to add another non-ult placement which is not even casting ult uh that's 810 because it's nine times six times three times five it gets rather crazy and there's also two spell combos where math is basically nine times six and then four ult placements as well on top of that which is 216 and then not to forget essentially you can add also basic ability plus ult i didn't think about about those there's also uh, nine basic abilities times ult before and after so that's another 18 variants which gets us to total 1044 combos and for the clarity's sake i will be referring to the spells as in like q1 q2 q3 instead of q q q w q e because it's really really awkward to listen to somebody speak oh i did the combo it's like q e q q w q it's gonna just mess up in your head we're gonna think about it in a bit more like solid matter anyway you don't have to memorize all of these i have created this very nice guide for you to help you as, as this cheat sheet sheet because not all of them are useful obviously there's only a handful of them that you will be utilizing these ones that i identify do the trick for exactly the purpose that you want them to so i'll show you the patterns right now i've organized the combos in a perfect cross section of how useful it actually is and how often you will use it so efficiency plus the the quantity so naturally the bread and butter combo will be the wave control combo laning is his most crucial weakest difficult part so that's where the true masters will shine and obviously we all know about mid lane it's all about pushing and getting the control of the wave so pushing is your bread and butter and here's how you do it i call this the wave combo this is the first combo you need to know essentially just doing w3 and q3 so in lane you will be constantly needing to use w for mana so it will be w3 spam and you'll notice the pattern it like repeats all over again so w3 is pretty much always before combo uh just make sure not to use all three auto attacks before dumping the ability to not waste the bonus damage on the ability and what you're gonna do is do w3 and then q3 and try to line it up to hit as many minions as possible that will give you significant lane pressure and possibly try to touch the enemy the range is very deceptive it's pretty long on the q3 so you're gonna try to reach the enemy to proc your first strike comet or scorch or whatever you, you have right uh so that adds a little bit of a pressure in the case enemy is a bit closer uh you will want to auto attack them with one w3 that's more than enough because that will be enough to proc the passive if you tag them just once with your w3 and q3 just scratches them you will proc the passive okay next combo is wave control plus combo here we're gonna be using w W3, but before using Q3, we're gonna do E2. Okay, if you guys don't know, the E2 is the eyeball. Uh, if you play, you, you'll know. What you're gonna do is you're gonna self W3 again for the mana refund. Like, this is very, very mandatory. Mana refund and bonus damage. What's not to like there? So you're gonna throw the E2 or the eyeball to either left side or right, depending where the enemy is. You're basically trying to shepherd him back into the wave. Okay, that's the idea. Even if the root doesn't hit, you will be hitting them with Q3. Because you're gonna throw it just slightly out of the wave and then throw the Q3 on the wave, which is basically the wave control plus combo it just burns a little bit more mana but for way way higher potential yield because you're gonna get wave pressure push the wave but also potentially root enemy or zone him into the wave and you can proc your passive with it so that's gonna be very very good controlling combo that you can do okay now this is one of my favorites this is what i loved using and it feels so satisfying when you land it this is the sun strike combo i named him like that because of invoker it's basically used to chip enemy held bar it's not extremely efficient if enemies are full hp but but it's still very relevant and it really depends like how much mana you have like uh, in what state you are so essentially we start off with w3 again you get the mana and the bonus damage and then you're gonna do q2 okay q2 range is enormous uh, in low relay you might catch people off guard in high elo i imagine everyone's gonna be dodging this all the fucking time so i'm gonna give you the tip for a high elo keep track of enemies what they're doing if they're slightly moved out of position like they're slightly out of position you know they have to move backwards if they're moving backwards they just eliminate 50 percent of their options because they can only run any of the directions 
positions above, no below. They can't go towards you, right? Now, otherwise, they're going to get like in an even shittier position. So it's basically like if you catch them in a position where they're greeting for third plate or in some sort of rotation where they have to move in one singular pattern, just W3, Q2, Sunstrike their ass, like right where they're supposed to go. So that's one of the plays. You can also do it in a, like uh, when they're trying to leave the lane so you can kind of zone them or punish them if they try to leave it. When they're trying to auto attack and uh, hit the cannon, whatever. Any of those, you just catch them while doing something. This can land and it's incredible. Now, we have a bit of a more consistent variant of this combo, which you will love. And this is Sunstrike plus combo. It's more consistent, but one requirement for this, the prerequisite of this is you need to be under turret. So if you're the winning mid laner, or at least the one who's pressurizing, shoving the wave, you will be under enemy tower. You will drop E2 right around near the turret. And E2 is like not very landable. Like none of his abilities are broken, which is something I love. And none of his abilities are like so easily landable. But enemies have it more difficult because they don't know what you're going to cast and you have so many different abilities. So it's a very, very cool concept of a character. Anyway, you're going to be dropping E2 eyeball next to the turret and enemies are obviously like walking around the turret trying to get to an angle to get the minions. So either they're going to miss minions or they're going to get hit by E2 or they're going to get zoned into the position where you want them to. Either case, if they're a little bit too close to your E2 and they're going to pick up the root, you know the drill. You got the W3, you put the E2 to root them and then you can walk out of the third range and then sunstrike them with the Q2. And that's going to proc your passive as well. And if you do this two waves back to back, enemies doomed. And then they're just waiting to get dove by your jungler or one of your combos and they just have to leave lose CS and everything so this is the most oppressive thing you can do but it requires you to be kind of good already right you have to be in a position that's why i taught you how to shove control and then once you're under that control exercise that pressure and uh just get more advantage over it let's talk about what happens if enemies like you're in a bit of a bad matchup enemies slightly pushing towards you right so enemies controlling you uh which is gonna be the case because he's fairly weak early and there's going to be a lot of characters that are going to be trying to bully you. So this is the chunk combo. It's used primarily when enemies are close to your melee minion line. They're staying behind the boundary to zone you and enemies are at your melees. So what happens then? Your strongest damaging and the easiest ability is Q1. And now it gets a lot easier to land Q1 because they're next to minions and it has a bit of a splash, right? It's going to hit kind of like the Zoe Q. You can do a fairly bit of AoE. What you're going to do is you're going to W3 for mana refund and then nuke the enemy and the minion wave with the Q1. That's the chunk combo. Just kite out, puff. That's a minor, minor trade. So we also have chunk plus combo, which is similar to that, but you have two different variations of this. If enemy starts running away after you show a bit of force and you hit them with the minions, you will follow them and do one W3 auto attack with them. That will also proc your passive, give you more mana refund, and then maybe we can continue hitting the, the minions to get the third stack. So you just get the full mana back. That's basically successful deflection. There's a second variant is if enemy is much, much stronger than you and they proceed to chase you even after that, you will do E1. So if enemies are chasing you, after the W3 Q1, you're going to do E1, which is pretty much unmissable on characters chasing you. It's the fear, which does surprising amount of damage. That is also going to procure passive. Q1 E1 is very, very deadly. And enemies, even if they're in a huge advantage and they're like really going beyond the wave to pressure you, destroy you. If you land this two times, they'll probably be low. Unless they have like severe health region or something. So two of these combos will cost you some mana, but you will also refund on both uh, Q1 and E1. And then maybe can order attack if enemies are like if they were too close and getting feared away or maybe you can hit a minion or maybe you just like wait it out you know so anyway that's just one offensive one defensive combo depending on the outcome and they're both really really incredible at fighting off enemies what happens even a worse scenario okay enemies are just totally beyond the wave you, you cannot reach the wave this is a pick combo pick combo is incredible it's probably one of the deadliest ones and it's probably the one that's going to give you the most kills depending on how the game plays out especially in like lower elo like diamond and below a pick combo will be like the way to kill people if they're completely beyond the wave zoning you out or if you're seeing enemies prowling in the jungle where there's no minions nothing to block there's nothing to fear then okay you're gonna do the self buff w3 then you're gonna e1 and then you're gonna q1 enemies that makes the q1 basically guaranteed and they don't get to fight back because they're feared so as long as you can catch them out of the wave kind of in a like just trying to push towards you or like face check you uh just e1 q1 boo so that's gonna crush it now we're getting to the a bit more complicated stuff where you want to use your ult okay so this is the pick plus combo so his ult is very very difficult to land this character way has ult which is kind of like Varus ult in terms of range but it's slower and harder to land but i would say that it's more deadly when it lands it will slow enemies for quite a few seconds while doing damage and it's gonna burst which means enemies can't really assist that guy because they have to be far away to not take damage 
extra damage. So what you're going to do is you're going to buff yourself with W3 and then fear the enemy E1 into the ult. So instead of Q1, we're doing the ult. And now we have a bit of nuance. This is where it comes very, very detailed. And I have to, trust me, I've learned this the hard way because I test it a lot. So once you fear the enemy with E1 and then press alt fear duration is only one second you have to really keep track whether enemies have tenacity and if it's max range fear if you hit somebody on max range they're gonna walk away from you as well so when you throw your ult the, the cast time and the travel time is fairly slow they might run away from you and get out of fear just in time to avoid it you have to make sure that enemies aren't like completely insanely far away after the e1 so if let's say if enemy is face checking you you will not fear him as soon as you can you will fear him like maybe half a second later just delay your combo like half a second so they walk in just a little bit more then you fear them then you press ult okay now here comes where comes the flash play so you have to understand if enemy has flash so this is again also a bit of a nuanced play because you have to understand whether he has flash up or not so you have to track that if their flash is down once you land this you can immediately q1 because they're going to be slowed with ult so you e1 fear ult and then q1 to giga chunk if you're in mid game and you have like one item two item spikes chances are you're going to kill somebody with that if not they're gonna destroy a team fight anyway so you're gonna get the objective that's if they don't have flash if they do have flash i can bet anything that as soon as you land the e1 into ult they're gonna panic and flash right after so if we know that they have flash up we will not insta q1 because that q1 no way in hell is gonna land during the course of the fear so enemies do have counterplay and they will flash it away so what you do is you just delay your ability slightly e1 r and then walk forward just follow them a little bit they will flash out of panic and they're gonna q2 because that's a massive range and it's unmissable because they're very slow because of your ult and then q2 coincidentally also does extra damage the lower they are which means your e1 damage is gonna work your old damage your passive damage all of that is going to stack into the w2 execution and that's how you kill enemies despite them having flesh you still kill them uh so that's incredible that's just one of my favorite combos and i'm telling you that's how you're gonna get kills so we have chase combo number nine uh this is basically like the sun strike but where the enemies are really really crazy out of position so let's say you rotated from mid lane to catch enemies uh fighting your teammates and or running away like limping away from a bad fight or they were greedy hitting the turrets whatever all you gotta do is spam w1 q2 that's the combo because you're gonna enhance your and your teammates movement speed with w1 and then you q2 on the location when they're running away no remember how we talked about only 50 percent of movement that they can have because when they're moving like away from you they they're out of position um so they either choose to walk into your teammates because you're zoning them or they choose to tank two sun strikers back to back and die so <laughs> either way that's awesome i love that one that, that it's like catching people off guard that's why having ghost or teleport so you can get involved in the map is very very important because you're a very very controlling character and even if they turn on you you have you have so many different plays if enemies like get somehow reinforcement you have so many options like you got your ult you got your fear you got your root you got so many ways to deal with the situation that this character is incredibly controlling and the more movement speed you have the better you are at chasing and controlling the fight so he's so cool to play as a control mage okay here's one of the very very cool thematic combos which i love ah uh, this is the eye combo number 10 it's used for controlling the river in the case of doing dragon baron or void grubs you will be doing objectives presumably uh you have the control you enter the river okay so you have to guard it now so what you will do is you generally will shield your teammates in this case because you came to fight there's no time for like optimizing your damage with your we or getting mana refund uh this is where we go all out we're expending resources right so you're gonna drop w2 on your teammates which is like shield on you and your teammates and it's replenishing that signalizes to enemies we're here to stay this is our area this is where this ability comes in super handy e2 eyeball you drop this it will reveal area reveal brushes see enemies and linger there for a few seconds so enemies see it they can't enter they're getting zoned away they're getting rooted and whoever comes close depending if they walk into the root itself uh you're either gonna q1 if you're close or q2 if you're far away let's say like enemies have five people contesting your five men you're probably gonna be farther away so you're gonna do the root step away and then q2 from long range if enemies have like they're slowly entering they're not very synced very well somebody just died they're late to the dragon somebody just respawns so you know they're coming in one by one essentially you're not really afraid you drop double u2 enemy and then e2 on the brush they come in you q1 because you're closer you don't care if they hard engage you like not only are they chunked but you have the numbers advantage so you're just playing according to how much pressure you can afford and then there's the i plus combo this is more likely in the case of 5v5 uh it's a bit more higher reload contesting of the dragons and objectives so enemies coming in you put the w2 and then e2 
need to to zone them and enemies just don't care only one person can get zoned they don't want to give you vision for a long time one guy will tank the route and they're just gonna move into you okay it's so like they, they want to contest this is like high elo organization in that case you will be instantly dropping ult as soon as the root hits that's just gonna destroy their cluster the ult is gonna keep growing it's gonna slow everyone one hit is guaranteed their team fight is fucked because not only do they they just made a decision to engage on you as five men but now there's like a new thing where oh my guy is hurting me i have to run away from him so you'll see some people go back into their own jungle one guy will be stuck on the outer edge and try to enter the fight for you guys and it's gonna be like 5v1 you crush him one guy is slow by your ult others left and they, uh, the fight is total unless they're insanely ahead you're gonna win that fight always and there's a 12th defensive combo and i think we're gonna stop here because these are all like the the patterns there's a lot of minute differences you can engage in and a lot of these combos so instead of getting mana you can get a shield instead of getting mana you can get movement speed you just have to like reposition ever so slightly because of certain circumstance uh you can exchange these plays a little bit you know instead of doing the q1 enemies are slightly split you want to do zoning more uh you do q3 all right you don't need to chunk the first target especially if he's like a giga tank you don't care about hitting him so you're gonna drop the fire on the field and the enemies are kind of slowed down yeah those are just nuances that you will understand yourself as soon as you play a few games i just try to identify the combo slash gameplay pattern which will make you good at this champion if you can shift between these patterns seamlessly in your head like okay now we're guarding the area okay now we're trying to kill the enemy okay now we're controlling the wave if you can do that you're gonna be a great wave player and this is the final one this is the defensive combo phalanx combo i did this when i played on pb like let's say you play versus somebody who's gonna jump on you you're playing versus pike mid lane or, or uh, whoever wants to jump like taldo in mid lane right so you drop w2 on yourself and this shield i played arena a lot and the shield is phenomenal man it's so underrated it gives you constantly replenishing shield and like you can out trade assassins within it you drop w2 enemies jump in you're gonna e1 fear and into q1 nuke those are two very very high damaging abilities but fairly difficult to land but since they're melee and you're in your shield you have the privilege of like walking around it repositioning you can pretty much guarantee your e1 e1 fear q1 nuke that's passive proc you can dump few auto attacks as well and then not only are you sitting in a shield your shield is now full because you let enemies destroy your shield you fear them by the time fear is over your shield is full again you nuke them with the q1 and enemies are now stuck in between your entire minion wave because they presumably jumped on you what do they do they, they can only just bend their tail and then fuck off right they, they can't fight you anymore it's over the, the fight is over they walk back they still have to go to a shield they still have to tank the minions your auto attacks due to the range at that point the trade is over it expends a lot of mana but is a very very good defensive play against pretty much anything that can jump on you so yeah phalanx combo i plus i chase combo pick pick plus chunk chunk plus sunstrike sunstrike plus and wave control wave control plus those are the 12 combos i've written down and they're like the key ones to understand i hope you enjoy the character this character is phenomenal i love it i will be spamming the more i will be making a mobile fire guide for this character so you can also see the items because items will shift and i don't want to go into items too much here so i will be changing items and updating that as we speak but this is the combo guide and, and the gameplay pattern and yeah thank you all for tuning in hope you enjoyed the video and bye bye